السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم، بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين، والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين. أما بعد فبشر لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي. So today we will talk about this hadith um, and what I want you to do, I'll read the Arabic first but when I pause, I want you to recite after me in Arabic, okay? When Abi Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an, anna al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal inna al-sidqi yahdi ila al-bir وإن البر يهدي إلى الجنة وإن الرجل يصدق حتى يكتب عند الله صديقا وإن وإن كذبا يهدي إلى فجور وإن الفجور يهدي إلى النار وإن الرجل يكذب حتى يكتب عند الله Kazaban, Kazaban. Okay, the meaning of this is uh, Abdullah bin Masood reported the Prophet said, Truth leads to piety, and piety leads to Jannah. A man persists in speaking the truth till he is enrolled with Allah as truthful. Falsehood leads to vice, and vice leads to the hellfire. And a person persists on telling lies until he is enrolled as a liar. Now this is, hadith is about two things, truth and lies, right? This is something that is very, very common in society. And lying does not have, does not discriminate. You lie whether you're young or old, rich or poor, black or white, male or female, right? Everybody lies. But there is a consequence to this lying. And as Muslims, we should know that these consequences are fairly high. We should never take lying at, I mean, you should never minimize lies. You can't say there's a small lie, there's a big lie. Lie is a lie. And I want to start by saying that lying starts as young as kids who are your age or even younger. So the example could be your mother asks you, have you done your homework? You started it, you may not have started it, you may have not even thought about it, but somehow in the back of your mind you say, yes, mother, I have done my homework. This is not to say that you won't do your homework. You may immediately get down to it and finish it within like 10 minutes or one hour, right? But the fact that you've told your mother a lie in your mind is not that great. Another example is when your mother asks you, have you prayed and you say, no mother, not yet. That's the right answer you should say when you have not. But if you say yes, then that is a problem. That becomes a lie, right? Um, so some, that's something that we need to keep in mind because what starts small in the vast majority of the cases becomes big. Take the example of a seed that you plant on the ground. What is the size of a seed? It's smaller than Sometimes it's smaller than your fingernail. You put it in the ground, it germinates, it grows. Two months later, if you compare the size of the plant, even if it's like a leaf, that compared to the size of the seed that you put in is, is very large. The proportion is very, very large. So what I'm saying is, if you start lying now, what will happen is you will take this into your adulthood. So small start, small lies with a small start is just a start, right? What is the example of the lie growing big? When you're growing bigger, you cheat others. 
you take what's not yours right which is not a good thing good thing at all and you and when you're an adult you like to earn your livelihood there are so many professions which are based on a lie people who write viruses for computers there's nothing good that comes out of it they basically uh, deceiving others saying that this is a good program download it on your computer and it causes harm so i've got a simple uh, uh, visual here everybody sees see this a uh, green line see the green line so this is the path this is the straight path this is the path that will take you to jan everyone see a small orange line line let a small line you see it okay so this is a small deviation from the straight path right it's a very very small deviation from the straight path but if you continue with that see where that orange line went you see that and this is a distance of 8 and 1/2 inches in 8 and 1/2 inches that small deviation plus the 4 inch deviation half the paper almost half the paper in the course of this very small thing so when your start in line is very small think about this line where is it going to lead you if your line if you extend this line out through the course of your life you're going to be a big liar by the time you're 30 years old and that is not a good thing okay the other thing about lying is that it is really not the right way to go because when you lie what do people there's a saying that say you get tangled in your own lies right so you have to remember what you lied about whom you, to whom you lied about what you said is there a different version of the story and then ultimately it causes trust issue because one friend says like he told me this the other friend says that he told me that it's like hey this guy is not a person that we can trust because he's lying right okay so let me tell you a story and this story hopefully is that drives on the point the story is that of a merchant the merchant used to sell cloth cloth that used to shirts from trousers from curtains bed sheets whatever so he was a merchant so he deals in this cloth and one day his supplier gave him a a merchandise a set of merchandise which is not good just just second grade merchandise it had faults in it it had threads that were coming out is but only if you are if you are a buyer will you know that so another customer customer walks into his store and he sees this merchandise he picks it up he pays his money and goes away then this merchant who is a muslim realizes oh my god i never disclosed to him the fact that this is bad merchandise right is one thing to actually tell the person and then he knows about it and he buys it from you the other thing other thing where you say where the buyer thinks everything is the same in the store buys it goes away and then finds out later so that merchant realizes this and he has his customer's address he follows him this is in a different time okay so he follows him finds him and so the buyer is actually surprised hey what's happening here i bought the merchandise from you i gave you the money what's the problem we, we don't we don't need to interact anymore so the merchant says listen the merchandise that you bought was actually second grade it is not something that we normally sell but it came to us and we put it there and and you bought it so the person is surprised so so what is it to you that i bought this i already made the purchase I'm comfortable with it basically i don't know, you don't know that i knew and i don't know that you cared right so he went by he, the, the merchant says listen i'm a muslim i have to disclose to you what that merchandise the merchandise is actually faulty and then if you want a discount i can give you a discount if you want your money back i'll give you your money back and take the merchandise back he's like what requires you to do this the, the customer asks what requires you to do this he says my religion I'm a Muslim, and this requires me to do this. My religion requires me to do this. So that person says, "What does it take to be a Muslim?" And he says, "He took the shahada. The the customer took the shahada at that very point in time. He became a Muslim because he's like, this is awesome, because you followed me, leaving a shop behind, 
a bigger responsibility so that you can speak the truth to me and get the thing from you. So the customer turns around and says, here's your money. The merchant's like, well, you just gave me the money. Are you asking for it back? What are you, why are you giving me more money? He said the money that I initially paid, with, paid you with was fake. See how that lie led to another lie. So there's nothing good that came out of it. But when the truth came to that, uh, this, the, the buyer, the, the buyer also felt that remorse and gave him actual money. So that transaction, which was cursed to begin with, bad merchandise, bad money, became two Muslims and the person actually got money, became a blessed uh, transaction. So that is the kind of good that the uh, that that speaking the truth does for you. Um, so Allah Taala says in Surah At Tawbah, "O who you believe, be afraid of Allah and be with those who are true in words and deeds." Is it, Allah says, "Be afraid of Allah." Why? Anyone guess to guess why we should be afraid of Allah and we should uh, be be with those who are truthful? That's one thing. The other thing is he is all seeing, all knowing. He knows when a lie is being uttered that it's not true, right? Because he knows our innermost thing. He knows every detail of our lives. If you say I haven't done it when I have done it when you have not done it, Allah knows that. He says so. Be fearful of Allah. Be be in a state of mind where you know that somebody is always watching. Your mother, may, your mother or father may watch you, and that may be a control. But your mother and father can't read your thoughts, right? Your mother and father can't read your thoughts. That is capable. Allah is capable of that. And Ibn Kathir, on that particular ayah, he says it means be truthful and adhere to truthfulness, and you will be among its people and be saved from calamity, and this will make a way out for you for your problems. Who knows what a calamity is? Calamity is something that causes sadness. Something so bad that happens, even for a short period of time or a long period of time, it causes sadness within you. And nobody likes to be sad even for a short period of time. But he says that if you speak the truth, Allah will find a way out of that for you. You find that it'll, it'll make a way out of your problems. So that is the consequence of lying. And on the opposite side, so lying is like really bad, right? So think about how fruitful speaking the truth is. Allah says, will, this will lead to Jannah. How simple is that? It is difficult to implement, but always be conscious. Am I lying? Why am I lying? Okay. It's a short term hit. My mom may not like me for that particular instance when I say I prayed when I'm not, but resolve yourself to not do that anymore. If you're not done your homework, tell mom I will do it now. I forgot about it. I was reading this thing. I was playing a video game when I, was, when I said I was reading, uh, reading a book. So that is the level of thing that I want you to take away from this. Understand that always portray reality. Always portray things that are um, truthful. Allah will find a way out of your problems, and inshallah, we will all take Jannah. Inshallah. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.